Hi, I'd like to talk to you about four questions from price floors and price ceilings. Let's go to the first one. Let's see if I can get it in here. There it is. Which of the following best describes a price ceiling? So let's start out with price ceilings. And remember, price ceiling, let's see if I can write here. So I'll bring up my pen. Let's put it in green. So here's quantity down here, price, upward sloping supply curve, downward sloping demand curve. And now notice that if it's a price ceiling, a price ceiling is a maximum price, can't go above it. So it's a barrier um, that won't let you go up. Now if it's a price above equilibrium, well it's a barrier that won't let you go up. So you just go to equilibrium. So the only way the price ceiling is going to have an effect is when it's below equilibrium. So there's our price ceiling. Let's just put P right there. And actually, let's just put it in red, showing it's a barrier going up. I don't know why red would do that, but just let's say it does. Say here, don't go across that line. I guess we could put yellow tape or something like that. So here's our quantity demand. And people want more at lower prices, law of demand. Firms don't want to produce as much at lower prices, law of supply. We just created a shortage. So in this case, our quantity supply is less than quantity demanded. There's a shortage of the good. A lot of times if there's a shortage, there people might not, firms might say, okay, well, we won't give you the same quality as we did before, or people are gonna have to wait in line. But in this case, we're just saying quantity supply is less than quantity demanded. If the, this question was, just change to say which of the following best describes what a price floor is effective in keeping um, the actual market price. Well, then it would be the opposite. And a lot of times I'll take my questions and just reverse it and just change one word like price ceiling to price floor. So if this said floor, well, in a case of a price floor, let's put it in a blue color just to change the color here. Well, if it's a price floor, here's quantity, here's price, supply, demand. Let's put it in red again to say there's now there's a barrier keeping my price from going down. Price floors are minimum prices. So now I can't go to equilibrium. I'm forced to have a higher price. So here's quantity supplied. Go take the price over to this price or take the price over to the demand curve and down. We'll give you the quantity demanded. Take the price. Let's redraw this a little bit bigger. Oops, doesn't want to let me redraw it. But hopefully you see up here, price is above equilibrium. Always take the price over to the supply curve and down, quantity supplied, price over to the demand curve and down, quantity demanded. Notice how much firms are willing to produce is bigger than what people want to buy. Just like when we did it in supply and demand, this is a surplus. While over here we had a shortage. And if there's a surplus, that's when quantity supply is greater than quantity demanded. So A is a surplus, B is a shortage, C is equilibrium, and D is just I had to put something in, or this question had something in to take up space. Sound good? Okay, let's go to the next one. Price effects of a price ceiling. Well, we just mentioned it briefly before. If there's a shortage, that is, if the price ceiling has an effect in keeping the price down, price won't, it's not allowed to go up to equilibrium. If the price is below equilibrium, we know from before that there is a shortage in the competitive market. And if there's a shortage, well, firms don't have to take as much care in terms of the quality of their product. People could be waiting in line. A bunch of different things like that. So in this case, looks like this one's asking about quality of the product. So we would expect what? Uh, B, quality should decline. Let's go on to price ceiling in a table case. Well, in this case, let's see, suppose the government sets a price ceiling of 80. So there's our $80 price ceiling. And at $80, let's see if I can get a little bit. So basically, if I was going to graph this thing, looks like equilibrium is where the 18 is equal to 18. 
price is what 100 and now we have it at 80 right here at 80 this is quantity demanded is 20 over here 16 right here notice take the 16 on up where's quantity demand at 16 people are willing to pay up to a hundred and twenty dollars for that that amount okay so what's our question here it looks like we just created a shortage 20 minus 16 I think is pretty close to four million coats and um, definitely a shortage so it's definitely not a surplus so it looks like we're 3a so if government set a price ceiling of 80 there would be a shortage of a shortage of a surplus and if so how large there so there would be a shortage and how large four million coats we're done now some of you ask me well wait we know you might change that from a price ceiling to a price floor a minimum price now, let's say I leave it at 80 well if that's a now a minimum price of 80 well minimum you can't charge less than 80 but I could charge a hundred so in that case if I changed it to a price floor of 80 well there's no effect because the equilibrium price would just be a hundred price of coats would be a hundred and the law says you can't ch charge less than 80 so in that case if I just changed it from price ceiling to price floor then the answer would be D there would be no shortage or surplus so you just need to it's just an application of supply and demand where you're looking at at is this a shortage is this a surplus normally if there's a shortage price goes up to equilibrium if it's a surplus normally price goes down to equilibrium so just think through a great example of applying supply and demand let's try this price floor question in competitive markets, what do business owners do when the minimum pri minimum wage rises? Well, minimum wage is a price floor. How does this affect teenagers? Well, if it's a price floor, a oh, great graphing question. Love it. So here's quantity. Here's my price. Demand curve. Supply curve. So it's a competitive market, supply and demand. Um, minimum wage rises let's put out the original minimum wage and can we assume this is above equilibrium if it's below equilibrium as we just mentioned on the last question no effect so I'm going to assume it's above equilibrium so let's say this is seven hundred seven hundred and twenty five dollars an hour yeah seven dollars and twenty five cents an hour at this case more teenagers want to work firm owners don't want to hire as many teenagers or people who low skilled workers so we just created a surplus of labor so there's a surplus surplus of labor is also known as unemployed uh, in a competitive market so let's see and actually if we raise the price from 725 to like eight dollars notice our we would have just gone a little bit higher and so our size of our surplus of workers would have gone up went up slightly right and so in this case let's check it out so when the minimum wage rises business owners owners will hire more no it looks like we said hire less so when the minimum wage rises business owners hire fewer low skilled that sounds so good so far teenage workers low skilled teenage workers and conditions get worse for teenage workers yeah, you don't have to attract workers you don't have to wa offer as much to attract your workers you've got all these workers trying to get jobs with you and so B looks pretty good and C when the minimum wage rises business owners hire more nope and any of the above nope B looks good